and it appears we are live welcome back to nansen office hours with a very special edition because today we are going to unveil nansen 2 to the public for the very first time my name is alex i'm the ceo at nansen one of three co-founders some people like to refer to me as the token god i also have some incredible guests that i'll bring with me on stage a little bit later but first like i said this is a big day it's a big week for nansen we are going to be talking about nansen 2 and most importantly we're going to be showing you nansen 2 so that you get a chance to see all this magic that has been created by the incredible nansen team over many months of work so let me just start by talking a little bit about why we actually built Nansen 2 in the first place. So earlier this year, we were in a situation where we really wanted to make product improvements. We wanted to ship new features. We wanted to make the existing features even better, the user experience much snappier and so on. But we found it, found it very difficult with our code base and the tech stack that we had. And so we made the bold decision to build the whole product over again from the ground up. And in doing that, we also thought, well, we know that a lot of people love Nansen, the product as it is today. So we should probably keep the spirit of that product. But this is also a chance to make some radical improvements to the loading speed, to the intuitiveness of the product, how easy it is to use and get around, and also to add some of these novel and innovative features that we had had in our backlog for a long time, but we had been unable to ship. And so we've tried to strike the right balance with Nansen 2, where it's familiar to Nansen lovers, but it's also new and exciting to those people, as well as more intuitive and easier to use for people who have never used Nansen or maybe even tried Nansen, but they weren't able to figure out how to use it. So I'll be going into a bit more detail on what these features are, and we'll also get to see some examples of that a little bit later. Um, I do want to remind you that this is a public beta, and it's important for me to emphasize that transparency and speed are two of the core values we have at Nansen. And so we've really decided to get this product out in front of users, try to learn as much as we can from how people are using the product. But that also means that it's not necessarily going to be perfect. There might be some bugs here and there. There might be things that should, be, should feel a bit smoother, but they aren't uh, as smooth as they should be yet. But these are all things that we just have to accept that we will be able to get to a little bit later as we discover them uh, so we can fix those and create an even better product. But we wanted to make sure that our users get the chance to actually play around with Nuts 2 as early as possible. And that's why we are launching in public beta today. Now, let me just share some quotes from what our early testers of Nansen 2 are saying. So we have people saying that this is the product that they were looking for. It's the end game for Nansen. They really like it. It allows people to get uh, smart money data faster, way faster than before. And there are tons of new features to sort and find more granular data. It stands out as an all-in-one solution in the world of blockchain analytics. Um, people emphasize the invaluable insights you can get and the super easy interface. Uh, and someone is even saying that it's way beyond their expectations. And they're highlighting that this isn't just um, another update. This is why we can proudly call it Nansen 2. It's genuinely um, a radical improvement of our previous product. So it's really nice to see that our early uh, testers are very positive to it and you'll get the chance as well to try it out in fact 
you know, if you want to, you can go to app.nansen.ai or just nansen.ai and find the right link to sign up for it right away. And then we can maybe do some degening and some aping together here in parallel. Now, if we look at some of the features that we are rolling out and improvements with Nansen 2, I'll cover this very superficially because I am uh, delighted to be joined a little bit later by some eminent folks who will actually show you these features in practice. But let me first mention that we have an incredibly good search. And this may seem like a simple thing or a basic thing, but it really changes the whole user experience with regards to navigation and the control you get when you use those. From now on, you don't have to worry about which link to click on in the sidebar. You just jump in, you slam command K, you write the name of a token, the name of an NFT, you paste in an address, you write the name of a fund, whatever you want, and we'll take you to the right dashboard and the right view. You don't have to worry about the navigation at all, pretty much. And this search is going to be built out even more to get even smarter. But it's a great improvement with regards to the speed and the navigation. Talking about speed, like I said earlier, we've rebuilt the whole product from the ground up and we've changed a lot of the technologies that we use. And as a result, the whole product loads, in many cases, 100 times faster than what Nonsen 1 did. This is one of the frustrations that many users uh, expressed about Nonsen 1, that they felt it was too slow. This has now changed with Nonsen 2. It is way faster and this allows for a much more fluid user experience when you're navigating through different wallets, through different tokens, etc. It's also much more personalized, the whole product. And this is really important to us because we want to make sure that Nansen is the place where you track everything on chain, where you track your own wallets, but also where you keep track of other smart money wallets, you keep track of tokens, NFTs, everything that happens on chain, you should be able to monitor and analyze with us. So the whole user experience is much more personalized and we'll see examples of that later. Then we have a couple of novel features and these are brand new things that you can't find anywhere else. There are no other um, products out there that do similar things. The first one is signals. Our mission at Nansen is to surface the signal and create winners in the future of finance. And signals literally does that. It surfaces what's happening on chain and it uses AI and anomaly detection to highlight interesting events on chain that you should be looking at. We'll get into the specifics and some examples of what that looks like in practice, but think of it almost like an, an equivalent to a Twitter feed, but instead of shit posts, you're seeing actual interesting events happening on chain pop up in your feed. And I'm really excited about where this is gonna go as an overall product feature. It's early days, but it's already super useful and one of the features that our yeah, users really love. The next novel feature we have is smart segments. And segments, this is a really cool feature because it really democratizes the concept of smart money. Historically, with Nansen, we have been the ones creating labels and we will still do that. We have more than 300 million addresses labeled. Don't worry about that. But now you can also create your own labels and your own segments programmatically, but you don't need the code. The only thing you have to do is input the criteria that you care about for specific wallets. For example, give me all the wallets that hold this specific token that have traded this NFT. Maybe if they've lost money on it or if they've made money on it, and you can create your own segments. And these segments you can use throughout the product. You can filter, you can put them into our profiler, and you can do all sorts of cool things with these segments. Finally, profiler, or what we used to refer to as wallet profiler, has been supercharged. You can really now plug in so many different things into profiler. You can plug in specific addresses, of course, but you can also enter entities like funds, like protocols, bridges and so on. And you can even input certain segments and labels as well. So it really gives you an incredible way to explore both individual wallets as well as collections of wallets in one user interface. So with me now, I have Alex A, who is head of product design 
Pat Nelson. Welcome on stage, Alex. Nice to have you with us. Alex Hello. is going to take us through um, a bit of a demo on three of the items that I just talked about. So without further ado, Alex, take it away. Hi, everyone. Excited to be here uh, and to kick off this demo of Nansen 2. Um, as Alex mentioned, uh, we have completely redesigned the product from the ground up to make it much faster, easier to use, and intuitive. So I'm excited to start off by showing you some of the key UX improvements we have made. Uh, the first big one that I want to show you is our new command case search. So this is our brand new search and command center. All you have to do is hit command K or control K if you're on Windows, or you can click on one of these uh, search prompts in the nav. And you can just start typing to find anything on chain, like a token, a wallet by an ENS name, or a certain dashboard on Nansen, like smart money. Additionally, what you can do is you can go through the focused commands, uh, such as profiler, where you can do focused searches for wallets by address, ENS name. You can also find entities by name. And as of recently, you can also look up dashboards, which show you an aggregated view of the activity of certain uh, of wallets labeled a certain way. You can also look at specific commands such as uh, token god mode, where you can find tokens by name or address on several different chains. Or you can look at some more advanced commands like wallet profiler for token, which allows you to view the relationship between a certain wallet and a certain token, wallet pair profiler for the relationship between two wallets, or token overlap for uh, the relationship between two tokens. We also have smart search, which is the ability to process natural language um, prompts. So for example, if I were to type up balances for a certain, a certain token, the smart search with, with uh, in this case, medium confidence is going to lead me to the token dash, uh, token god mode dashboard for this particular token, and it's going to take me to the balances tab um, to show me where who the top holders are. A key improvement here as well is the speed in which the dashboards load. So to demonstrate this, if I were to very quickly switch between a token, a NFT, a wallet. Uh, an entity, or if I were to navigate to, for example, one of our key dashboards, such as Token Paradise, this all happens instantly. And if you've noticed so far in my demo, I haven't even used my mouse. I'm just typing and I'm just using uh, keyboard shortcuts to navigate through the product. So um, this is uh, the first key impro improvement I wanted to show you. Uh, the second item uh, is basically related to uh, the way we have rebuilt our uh, dashboards. This is the newly redesigned and rebuilt token god mode dashboard, which includes a lot of uh, improvements on the way you can filter tables and the way you can interact with charts. To give you some examples, on the top transactions table, we have inc included some quick controls that allow you to very quickly, for example, filter this table to only see smart money transactions for this token. Uh, we have also introduced a variety of new filters, including the ability to filter the tables by label. And you can select from a variety of Nansen labels, or you can search through labels yourself. You can also filter the table by custom label, uh, which are labels that you have created to tag certain wallets. And if I head to the balances table, uh, here we have introduced some uh, improvements. You can, for example, 
choose to view the balances group by entity or by address, which is quite useful. And you can even filter tables by uh, smart segments that you have created. So for example, if I were to filter this table by this custom segment that I created, it's going to show me a custom view of that table. Another key improvement um, in the nav itself is the fact that now it's personalized. So you get, um, which has been a much requested feature, a history of the most recent dashboards that you have visited on Nansen. So you can go back without opening thousands of tabs. You can also pin certain dashboards for quick access. So for example, if I wanted a certain view of token god mode or of profiler of a certain token or wallet, I could pin this for quick access, um, personalizing my navigation to my needs. But one of the key improvements is also the fact that I can also pin individual tables and charts. So for example, now I have filtered this balances table and I want to pin it to a custom dashboard. What I can do is I can name this whatever I decide, add a balances for segment. And I can save this to my custom dashboard, which is located as a tab on my homepage. And as you can see, now I have saved this filtered view of this table. I can also edit this dashboard and move things around to get to a really personalized view. And I can basically create my own Nansen homepage that I could quickly visit. And as you can see, we've made uh, a lot of significant improvements in the way you can navigate to the loading speed and to the navigation itself to make it much more streamlined and easy to use. And these are just part of the improvements. Um, you can also, I would encourage you to also try our new mobile responsive version of the product. Uh, we have now introduced the ability to very quickly search for anything on chain while you're on the go on your phone. So if you want to try it yourself, just visit app.nansen.ai and give it a go. And we would welcome any feedback you have. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alex, for showing those features. Now I have another guest that I would like to bring on stage to talk about some of the other features we have. Welcome up. Uh, on stage, Dan M, who is a senior product manager with us here at Nelson. Take it away. GM, GM. Um, yeah, my name is Daniel. Uh, good to be here. Uh, yeah, so what I'll be taking you through are some of our new features, uh, you know, predominantly focused on signals and segments, but we will dive into other areas of the product as well. Uh, so to start off with signals, uh, what you see, uh, you'll find it on the Nansen Spotlight homepage. Uh, and this was the initial widget that we created. Um, and then due to a lot of feedback, uh, we also built out the signals feed, which I will work off for this demo. Um, and yeah, this was user feedback. Users said they wanted more real estate because they really enjoyed signals. Uh, so we created a feed that you can kind of just scroll through and it seems to become part of everyone's morning routine. Um, but yeah, before I dive into the actual feature, just a bit of background, as Alex S touched on, uh, sing, um, uh, a bit more about Signals is like, or what it is exactly, is Signals any unusual or extraordinary event that occurs on the blockchain. So we look at all the historical data, and then if we see there's any abnormal spike or something, anything that's out of the ordinary course, we capture it here using machine learning and AI. Um, so that's the gist of it. Uh, it also updates every hour, and no signal is older than 24 hours. So everything you see here are fresh signals, which is great. Um, uh, we've also got a bunch of different uh, signals uh, and, and way more to come as well. Uh, so you'll see there's a bit of everything. There's some for NFTs, there's some for tokens. Um, so you can really customize it, uh, customize the signals you want uh, through the filter. So let's say you're interested in uh, NFTs, you go, you select uh, these four NFT signals, and then you'll save them, and you'll see what appears there. 
Um, and then what's really cool about these photos is that they're also sticky. So let's say you've got a smart money or you log out, you come back and the photos will always be there, which is which is pretty cool. Uh, if you if you don't know what a signal is, for instance, like you can hover over the eye section and it will highlight it. You know, I guess NFT volume is, is pretty straightforward, but uh, it's pretty cool to go through each one and, and see exactly what we are trying to highlight uh, for you. So on that note, let's actually dive into some uh, signals or a signal at least. Uh, more, yeah, one of my personal favorite is smart money token flows. Uh, I pretty much do this every morning. Uh, so yeah, my general workflow, I scroll through see if there's anything interesting. Um, the one I actually saw this morning, which was quite cool, was Olus. I believe this is a, yeah, it's a, a one of these new AI tokens. Uh, so it fits the current narrative. So yeah, jump to smart money. And yeah, so you uh, you can just look at the, the balance change here. And what's quite interesting, or at least some, or some type of buying behavior that I think is quite interesting is you can see there's this airdrop of Pro, and just hover over it, you also see that he's a smart dex trader. Um, so what's quite cool is that he's been accumulating this uh, from well, in the last 30 days, it was 9.30, seven day change was 9.50, uh, and then more recently uh, he bought. So you can actually, of course, you can go into it. This is, you know, we've been wallet profiler for token now. You can actually see his like purchasing, let's just make sure these are purchases, yeah. Um, you can see his purchasing behavior. So he bought some sort of it, and then he's been accumulating since. And it looks like he's actually doubled down in the last two days, and yeah, yesterday and today. So that's quite cool. Um, you can see he's up about 20%. And if you're interested in this token or the AI narrative, you, like, you can go copy his address and then set up a smart alert. So that's like, you know, something that you wouldn't, you know, something you wouldn't be able to find on Nansen One, for instance um unless you really went searching for it so that's like i guess the power of signals um so i could spend a lot of time on signals but i'm going to jump across two segments um so this is a new feature a new feature as well as alex mentioned uh so before i dive into the functionality like a bit more background i guess what's made nansen successful or at least partly successful is i you know we've brought i guess you bring like uh i get like descriptions or colors to what's happening on the blockchain through all our curated labels, it's almost easier to understand what's going on, who's buying and selling, um, and that gives it helps you make better decisions. But uh, of course, you know, crypto is quite a big, or well, it's still a small industry, but there are a lot of different uh, areas or categories. So you know, we, on one side, we've got like meme coin uh, traders uh, who are kind of always looking for the next narrative. Other side, you've got massive funds. So kind of building labels for everyone. Uh, is 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 tricky but we and so what we decided to do is create uh, allow users to do it themselves so they can have this personalized experience they can create their own set of labels which actually hasn't done hasn't been done before by anyone so this is really cool so now any any of you can go uh, create your own segments and then start uh, viewing them a profiler uh, filtering tables with them um, so yeah there's a bit of background so let's actually dig into it so essentially just click new segment We've got three conditions now. You know, we're at holds a certain token, NFT, or traded NFT, and we will be uh, adding way more. So, on the AI narrative, let's uh, look at uh, Reptile. This is obviously the, one of the more popular ones. Um, so, you add an amount because it's you know, like a mass, it doesn't have massive market cap. Uh, you know, you don't have to put too high of a, a number. Um, and then let's do. Let's do roll bits because that's always just uh, an interesting token uh, for uh, multiple reasons. Um, so over here, you can see we created, this is a segment, we found 20 wallets that kind of match both these criteria. So next step is to save the save the segments. I'm just gonna say live stream and then in the description. I always just put the tokens in here uh, because otherwise I will forget if you create a lot of signals. I mean segments. Um, so great. So now we created the segments. So there are three different use cases here. The you know the first one you can do is you can go view it in profiler. Um, as Alex mentioned, uh, you know initially we just had profiler for wallets, then for entities, and now more recently for segments. So you can look at the segment of twenty wallets and see all the different tokens that they're holding. 
uh, and it's quite cool. You, so this is like a great way to discover um, new, well, new different tokens. Like there's Alpha here, there's obviously Prime. Olus has popped up again, which is quite interesting. Uh, and what's great is you can also go to look at any recent transactions as well. So this is like a really cool uh, view to see what the segment of users is buying. Um, and like, let's say you wanted to go and actually see like this Dubs token, I'm not too sure what it is, but let's say you wanted to go see like who or yeah, who in the segment actually holds this. You just go to balances uh, as Alex H, uh, Alex A showed earlier, you can just filter by uh, the smart segment that we just created now. And there you go. You'll see the two, uh, yeah, the, the two wallets that are holding that. So that's like, yeah, once again, pretty cool. Um, so let's just jump back. So yeah, that's one like use case for this. So you can see the profiler and then filter in tables. The other one, which is really cool, is to actually go and, you know, look in the actual uh, look for actual wallets. So there's the smart dex trader. Um, let's check it out. So, I mean, automatically, just uh, this is a bit of alpha. Like, there's a smart dex trader, which means like historically, this is a very profitable wallet uh, and is made of like 1.5 million dollars. Uh, and then there's also a 90 day smart dex trader, which also means in the last 90 days, he's the most profitable. So, like, automatically, I guess you know, okay, this is an interesting wallet to follow. Um, and then you can deep dive into this is yeah this is a model profiler. Now you can deep dive into their positions. So we're interested in in Raptile. Let's go see how like you know his his position. Um, okay, so automatically you can see he's like up about sixty one percent, bought around 50, 35, and, and sixty four. So automatically like okay looks looks pretty interesting. Um, Olus, we we back to this. Uh, once again, also up about 117%. So yeah, looking like a cool wallet. Uh, we can do one more just for the sake of it. Let's do Blur because of, I guess Blast has also been quite interesting. Um, and yeah, once again, up about 81%. So you can't think this is a, like an interesting wallet to follow. Maybe you're gonna do some more research on it and these different tokens. So the next step would be to uh, you can add it to your watch list. You can change the name if you want to. And you can add a diff, uh, additional labels. So you can you let you can actually create a label on the spot. Let's just say test and uh, interesting smart money wallets. And then any notes you could say found during the live stream. Obviously, you would write something else, but uh, just for context. Um, cool. So now you say that you can go and see it on your watch list. Hopefully you've got an ever expanding watch list uh, and you can see your notes, the different labels, and then the Dex trader as well. Ideally, the next step you want to do is also go set up a, a smart alert, um, which is, yeah, so you can see, uh, yeah, essentially you can see any movements as they happen, as opposed to uh, just seeing it on Twitter or something. Um, and cool. So that's the second use case. Profile are actually finding cool wallets. And the third use case that's quite popular is let's say there's someone on Twitter or someone you know, and they're holding tokens A, B, and C. Using segments, you can go and track them now. So I actually saw one come up in the segment. Uh, it's like Ansem, for instance. He's relatively well known on Twitter. Uh, and through smart segments, I'll be able to find his wallets, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that is, I think that's the end of my segment. Um, you know, excuse the pun, but over to you, Alex. Thank you, Dan. Super exciting. I love seeing uh, power users of Nelson who know how to use Nelson better than myself. For for a long time, I was the the most power user of Nelson, but uh, I shall consider myself dethroned by your little demo. Thanks for taking us through that. Um, in fact, now I think we're going to shift gears a little bit, and I'm going to bring in Ed from our team here also known as Nansen 2 Intern, or is it Nansen Intern 2? Which which one is it? Well, welcome, Ed. Hello, hello. Thanks for being on it. I'm excited to be here. I don't know. I think we should go for the Nansen 2 Intern, you know, new product, <laughs> new intern. It's that simple. Uh, I love it. I love it. Awesome. Um, so at this point, I'm actually going to try to just poke around a little bit in Nansen 2. And 
we probably should have said this at the beginning of the stream, but obviously none of the stuff that you see here is investment <laughs> advice. The only thing we're doing here is jumping around and seeing whatever pops up uh, in the product. And one of the magical things about doing office hours and live demos like this is that we can't really re rehearse them because the data changes all the time. So you never know, know what we're going to find. Occasionally, we might be able to leak a little bit of alpha. Who knows? So stay tuned for the next half hour or so. Also, if you want us to cover anything in particular, you can leave some comments in the stream. And occasionally, Ed is going to hop in and maybe pass uh, some of those questions uh, over to me. But I think I'm just going to dive in here. I've got the screen up. And I think one thing uh, which is a good place to start if you don't kind of know exactly what you want to do is just to look at this first widget here, smart money token inflow. This basically gives you an idea of what the smart money has been either buying or at least receiving uh, in the last 24 hours. I'm seeing some interesting stuff here. For example, this mantle token. By the way, I have to say, Personally, I really like the way the hover overs work now because historically you had to open a million different tabs when you were using Nelson. But these hover overs often just give you the chance to get a bit of a glimpse of whatever you're looking at, whether it's um, tokens or even specific wallets. You get this little preview, which is quite nice, um, where you can see, for example, labels and net worth of the different uh, addresses. But maybe we can just try and jump in and look at MNT. So this is the Mantle token. Um, you can see live DEX trades here. So these will be popping up uh, as new DEX trades come in. Um, you know, as I said earlier, it's day zero for Nansen 2. And we really want to get your feedback on what it's like to use the product. One thing that we've been discussing in the team is maybe this DEX trade section should be spun out to its own separate tab for live trades. And then instead, what we could surface earlier is, for example, this widget, which talks about who has been buying this token and who has been selling this token. Because very often, if you see something like a price pump or you see smart money um, inflows, you want to figure out well, who exactly has been buying it? So I, I personally find this widget here quite useful and quite cool to understand in the last 24 hours or in the last seven days, who's been buying and who's been selling. So for me, a flow would often look like that. You spot a signal a bit like what um, Dan was showing earlier, either through the signals feed or maybe through the homepage. You click through on it, you want to dive a little bit deeper and you can answer, for example, well, who bought this token and who sold it? You also have this section here, right, with the top transactions. And so what it looks like, actually, in this case, is that there was a token migration. And that migration was done by Dragonfly. So Dragonfly, uh, presumably, then, is an investor uh, in MNT uh, in this Mantle token. And you can see them. You could click through on it. But for now, you can also just hover over it and see that that has a net worth. The specific wallet has a net worth of one and a half million which uh, you know, I learned something new there, which is nice. Um, and you can also go over and just look at, well, what does that mean in, in context of the broader cap table, if you will, or the balances for the token? Um, you know, Alex A was mentioning this kind of nice little UX feature where you can toggle between different views. I personally love this because I think the entity view often kind of it takes away a lot of the clutter in the UI. And instead of seeing lots of the same address listed over and over, you can just aggregate it up to the entity level, which is one of the things that Nansen does best of any product because we have the broadest coverage of wallet labels in the world. More than 300 million um, addresses labeled, which cover you know, collectively more than 80% of all the transactional flow that happens on chain. So. This is quite nice. You can see BitDAO has like 60% ownership of these tokens. Bybit has 23%. Uh, Mantle itself, um, Dragonfly Capital, which is the one we, we just looked at. And you can also see the change here with the 3 million. And if you zoom out a little bit and the time slider, you can see it's on the seven days, it's 15 million. And on the 30 day, it's 42 million, right? So 
there's been a bit of uh, some form of accumulation, maybe through migration or vesting on locks, uh, etc. So that's kind of interesting. I've, in fact, I'm kind of tempted to dig a bit deeper on that. I think one. you should dig uh, a, a bit deeper, actually, Alex. I was looking at the yeah. you bought over the 24 hours, and it looked like there's one address at the very top that's been buying in considerable size, and a lot more than other tokens. So I was just curious to see why that yeah. address was buying. So this one is showing the individual Dragonfly wallet, right? Which is the, there's from the Disperse, which is presumably some kind of vesting event, but it's only one token. And then there's an approved migration request, which is the, the migration itself. Uh, which, which one did you have in mind in terms of accumulation? Which, so uh, you go to your transactions and then to see who bought over the past 24 hours. Yeah, let's see here. And then you see that address at the very top. They bought a lot more. Ah. Go up a little bit. You, oh, you mean you mean this yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right ah, there, and okay. they got it, got it, significantly got it. more than others. And I'm kind of curious why. That's an interesting uh, EMS name as well. <laughs> I have He's to admit, own. my yeah, my Chinese is not perfect, but uh, so I'm not going to attempt to read that. But uh, hopefully, it's not saying anything profane. Who knows? Um, yeah, so you can see the historical token portfolio here, and they've been actually ramping up a bit with ETH and a few other tokens, RDNT, MNT, which is one we were just looking at, Wu, and so, et cetera. Um, and you could look at the individual transactions too, right? which is, uh, yeah, they've been quite active, it seems. In fact, they're trading like right now. <laughs> uh, so maybe they're watching our stream and trading, who knows? Uh, that sometimes happens. Uh, this is pretty cool. Yeah, so it's, it's an example of a, of a thing we just kind of discovered, and like you could go down that rabbit hole. Uh, maybe for now we'll step out of that rabbit hole, but it's definitely one that you could um, you could spend time on if you want to. In fact, you could also just add it to your watch list, right? And say, call it I don't know, interesting. Actually, um, MNT wallet uh, buying during live stream. Uh, <laughs> And uh, that's in my watch list now. Uh, you can also, of course, maybe to go back to some of the the old hits of Nansen, um, in Profiler, of course, many people like to look at counterparties. I think the counterparties table is now much better because it aggregates both uh, ETH and all other tokens in one view and just kind of normalizes it to USD value. So. And you can also um, more easily kind of slice and dice it with these convenient tickers or these convenient um, uh, buttons. So here I'm I'm changing to all. I want all history. I want to look at both ETH and tokens. And then I could change this to an entity view. And I see, well, actually, it looks like they've been re receiving tokens from Bybit. OK, maybe uh, withdrawing from, from Bybit. And then they have been sending tokens to one inch and Uniswap, presumably to just make trades. Um, and you have also this view here, which kind of looks at which tokens they've been receiving and also which entities they've been receiving them from. So this is something that, of course, was very um, popular in NONS1 or is very popular in NONS1. And I think we've upgraded it uh, quite a bit in this one. I kind of like this, this thing here as well, too, where you can just like eyeball which tokens they have been transacting with the different counterparties. That's quite nice. Um, so for example, with Gate, it's really only this Axel token, whereas with ENS DAO, it's uh, wrapped Ether uh, or just ETH, sorry. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a cool example. Do, do we have any questions actually in the in the chat? Maybe stuff we can look at or dive so into. So one question I saw was, um, from Smart Money Crypto, I uh, said, can we get copy uh, wallet option when hovering over the name, please, or right click, click options? Mm. Mm. Let's see. So we don't have that now. Interesting. Uh, maybe not super convenient. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's probably something we can we can do. Uh, actually, you do have this one now up here, right? Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. thinking. You could just or... you could just copy yeah. it from there, and then if so you maybe want to... it's... yeah. Maybe the UX was not super clear because they were looking here, but in reality, you can click up here to get it. So I think that should work. And then if you um, do want to copy trade that wallet, you can just set up a smart alert and then watch that account yep. trade in real time. So if you hold a lot of mantle, right. for example, in this case, 
have saved that wallet? They've been buying big. Have they started selling? Have they started buying even more? It's just something you can follow. 100%. By the way, maybe one thing to highlight too, that uh, we have more chains supported now and we're going to be adding even more chains every quarter going forward. But you can get this cross-chain views as well, which is quite nice, right? You can see holdings across multiple different chains. And so you see stuff here from Base, you see Linnea, you see Avalanche. This is a, a pretty active uh, smart dex trader. Um, and that's something that's new as well. And it's quite, quite, uh, quite nice. Uh, and of course, like as we add more chains, you'll get a more complete picture across anything that happens on any EVM chain, uh, because addresses are the same across EVM chains. That's why we uh, have built it like this. Okay. Um, by the way, like Alex was mentioning earlier, you do have this kind of convenient quick access thing up here too. This is another thing that was um, that is not that was not so practical in the old nonsense. Like you couldn't just very easily pin stuff. You had to kind of keep the tabs open and that kind of stuff. Now you have your history. And you can also pin stuff for quick access. For example, if there are specific tokens that you're interested in, you know, let's say I was looking at Cypher uh, the other day, that's going to be sitting here in my quick access. Uh, and then I can easily just go back to it uh, and I can see what's been happening, for example, in the last 24 hours in terms of transaction. Uh, interesting. Um, yeah, in fact, maybe this is also a good uh, occasion to show like some of the smart segment stuff I've been doing. Because so if we use Cypher as an example, right, that's uh, a project that has both NFTs and also tokens, right? So we're just looking at the token now. And so I created a segment here, which is one uh, where I want to look at all the wallets that hold uh, at least one Cypher token one Cypher Inu and one Cypher Neko, which are different NFTs uh, in their collections. And so I just set that up as conditions, right? Like uh, Dan was showing earlier. And I can now just look at that set of wallets, which is 542 wallets. And I can use it as a filter and I can look at what else are they buying or what, what else are they holding? There's Beam in here, there's Link, there's a few stable coins. Um, there's some staked ETH with Lido. There's T-Bill. Uh, we click through on this one. You can see tokenized T-Bills from Open Eden. Um, and you can see the transaction say, hey, that's my address. Look at that. So that's one of my custom labels uh, showing up there, which is cool. Um, so yeah, that's, you can see again, it personalized, personalizes the whole perspective um, and the views that you have in a much more seamless way so that you can also remember, hey, this is a wallet that I've seen before, uh, or this is a segment that I created. So we've got All another right. question, Alex, yeah, about stable coins, uh, specifically on stablecoin master sections. Mm. Uh, can we look at exchange assets any post and uh, look at different coins and stuff like that from there? Yeah. So this is a good time to bring up that we have not yet migrated everything over. Um, and Stablecoin Master is one of those dashboards that some people really love, but we had to make uh, a decision on prioritization and say, actually, we're not going to be able to ship this in Nansen 2 out of the public beta. So it's coming. And in fact, I think what we will do with Stablecoin is going to be even better because we have better multi-chain support now. For example, we support Tron, uh, where a lot of the tether, in fact, like that's where most of the tether is sitting. Um, and so we will get the chance to um, to look at what's happening in the stablecoin ecosystem with a more multi-chain perspective than in on some one. So this is uh, this is a good example of a of a feature that we're going to be migrating over soon. So Alex, what have you been really interested in right now in crypto? Is there any like specific tokens, maybe an NFT or an entity that you, has really caught your attention? Yeah, this is a good time to show my bags, right? So uh, 
I, I mean, <laughs> I was, show. I was, yeah. <laughs> she, she, she <laughs> so I was, uh, I mean, actually some of the stuff down here, like kind of gives an idea, right? Uh, I was looking at Cypher quite a bit uh, and I've been uh, accumulating a position in that it's a Web3 game, which um, is in private alpha right now. And I think they're going to ship their game in some form, public form uh, sometime next year. And I'm pretty excited about that because I have gotten the chance to actually try the game. And it is actually surprisingly good. Uh, the Web3 gaming bar, I think, is a little bit low. People, people don't necessarily <laughs> expect games to be very good in Web3 because they just think, hey, they just raised money and created a token. In this case, I was genuinely quite impressed by the game. And I did play it for probably a full week every day. Um, and so that's one thing I've been looking at. Um, you, we can actually take a quick look at it and see and see if we see my own wallet in here. Um, let's, let's start with the entity view again, right? So here you see Cypher itself, that's the team treasury. By the way, this is just to show people, right? You can also click through on that. And this is showing the treasury in this case of the Cypher project. And it's sitting at 18.2 mil. Uh, and you can see the breakdown of their treasury, right? As an example. But if I just hop back again, you see Cypher, you see CMT Digital. Interestingly enough, I had lunch with, with CMT Digital today, and I did <laughs> not uh, think about that before now. So this is not a plan, plan shill as such, full disclosure. Um, you see Ky KyberSwap and Uniswap, which are two liquidity avenues for this token. Oh, hey, look look at that. Who's that? <laughs> there you are. Uh, <laughs> that's me. Here's Dingaling. Actually, let's look at Dingaling because he, he does a lot of interesting stuff. Um, of course, the infamous Dingaling, who uh, has been a top holder in lots of different NFT collections. Uh, it looks like he has quite a bit of what is this? Is this Ave? Or actually, I should probably know this. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree. WBTC. Yeah, interesting. Does that mean he's like the top holder of this? Or uh, let's see. No, he's not top. He has like 1.1% of the treasury on that one, or of the total supply. Um, but yeah, this is this is uh, Dingaling, you know, owns this. Um, Loy Lu, who's the Kyber founder. So a few, a few interesting people who are on this, uh, this list. Um, what are some other things I've been looking at? I've also been looking at, um, um, let me go into the smart money, sorry, the smart segments and show you. I've been looking at the different uh, tokenized T-bills and tokenized money market projects. And these are quite small still uh, in terms of how many people actually hold these tokens. But I think they're interesting examples of real world assets that are increasingly coming on chain. And so there are a few different ones here. You have Mountain Protocol, uh, which has its own USDM token. And I've created a segment here, uh, which shows 107 wallets that, that hold Mountain Protocol USDM. There's Open Eden, which has its T-Bill token. And then there are a few other ones like uh, STBT and then uh, Ondo USG as well. And you can see the number of wallets is very small, 22, 52, 48, 107. Um, but it can be quite interesting to see what these wallets collectively hold. And here they hold almost 14 mil USDM, which is the token that I based this uh, segment on. But they also hold PERP, UNI, um, Aave, USDT. So getting yields on, on USDT. Uh, and of course, the stable coins like USDC, et cetera. It's a bit odd actually, like they, so they hold stable coins, but you could just maybe convert that into Mountain Protocol USDM uh, because it's generating yields of, I guess, around 5.3% uh, at this point. So, you know, I think that's an interesting area to, to monitor for 2024, uh, especially for institutional usage of crypto, uh, where I would expect a lot of institutional players to come in and start actually, you know, buying uh, tokenized T-bills, tokenized money markets, uh, and so on. So that's another thing I've been looking at. It's less of a degen thing, but I think it's interesting to see this on chain. And maybe also interesting to see 
collectively what these wallets are doing because most likely these are quite sophisticated um, investors. Um, they've had to go through like KYC and like onboard, they might uh, require a US entity. I don't think that's the case in Mount Protocol, but some of the real world asset projects uh, require this. So yeah, I, it's a good source of finding interesting addresses to look at. But not everything has to be all about being degenerate on chain. You know, as you say, like you have to follow sophisticated <laughs> actors. You have you can use Nansen however you like. I mean, I've been yeah. using Nansen to follow some degenerates, but um, each to their own <laughs> on that. I think, I think another yeah. use case, like some really interesting tokens at the moment I've seen on, on traction at the moment is Prime. I think that GameFi narrative is like climbing up mm. at the moment. You know, you talk about Cypher. I saw Dingling hold, holding a lot of Prime as well. Yeah, that's been uh, mooning. Pop Crypto yeah. buying 51,000 here in the last 24 hours. Yeah. Yeah, you get a very quick scan of like what's uh, what's going on here. So when you look at a token, Alex, what, what, what are the things to look out for? Say if you, you're not familiar with Nansen, you know, you're on mm. Prime, you've seen it on Twitter, you've seen it being chilled. Yep. What do I do? Honestly, I think what what I like to do is literally to just look at the top transactions. That's a good place to start because it gives you an idea of at least what's going on with this token right now, right? So the 24 hour transactions, do I see any whales dumping this token? Do you see whales buying it? Uh, do you see maybe vesting unlocks or transfers from, um, say, uh, the different vesting smart contracts that you have that are distributing tokens? Um, I think that's a good place to start to kind of just get a an overall sense of what is happening right now with this token before you start looking into any potential like fundamentals and so on. What does the token actually do? What is the project that's associated with it and so on? So in this case, Prime, honestly, I don't know a ton about it, but, um, you know, I'll prop so from that perspective, the next thing I would probably do is to understand the kind of cap table or the distribution of it. So where do these tokens actually sit? And it looks like 61% is sitting with Echelon, which I imagine is kind of the project associated with Prime. Um, there's also the Paragon's DAO. There's uh, GSR, Z Prime, Capital, Sigil Fund. So these are kind of classic you know, funds that you will probably want to follow in terms of understanding what they do. And so here, depending on if I'm a if I'm a an, an uh, investor in Prime already, maybe I'd set up some smart alerts for those wallets to see if they exit their positions. I will want to know about that. I want to see if they start selling it, or if they start buying more. That's maybe also something I would want to to know. So I'd set up smart alerts uh, for that in this case. Um, yeah, sorry, go for it. Yeah, I also think uh, it's important to note that we previously Nansen was seen as quite an expensive product, not accessible to everyone. So if you were using the free product where you can just literally go to app.nansen.ai and just go straight in, what can you see? What can you do? How does it compare to Nansen 1? And can you look into tokens such as this? Yeah, exactly. Um, maybe this is a good time to bring in Dan M to talk a bit about the differences uh, with the different plants. So if you're able to bring him up on stage, he'll be able to give us an overview of the differences in the different plants. There cool. he is. Welcome back, Dan. I'm back. I'm back. Um, yeah, so firstly, <clears throat> I definitely, I mean, if you want like an in-depth overview, you can go look at you know, nasm.ai slash plans. Um, and if you scroll to the bottom, there's like a section that says compare plans and you can you know see everything side by side. So that's... That's a good starting point. Um, but in general, in terms of the free plan, we definitely opened it up uh, more compared to what was previously existed. It was definitely a bit more gated. Um, so, you know, you get some basic signals, especially around NFTs. Uh, you get you get to create your own smart segments as well. Uh, it's only one for now, but uh, it's obviously previously something you couldn't do. And it's still like amazing functionality. You can still, you know, go search for wallets. There's still, like a lot of powerful things you can do there. Uh, in terms of, you know, we've opened up Nansen Profiler, so you can go look at different entities, different wallets, 
which is super useful. Obviously, you can do all of this uh, through our search as well. So all the basic functionalities there, of course, you know, portfolio and everything remains the same. And then also for tokens, like you can kind of pretty much what Alex has showed you, uh, you can uh, go over token, you, you can go over like the balances view, um, which, yeah, and, and the transactions view, which is like a good portion. For now, we've saved exchanges and smart money for the, the Pioneer tier still. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's a, yeah, a good summary of what you can get in free. Um, so there's there's a lot there compared to what we previously had, and and there is there is even some smart money that you can you can see just a just a taster. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's awesome. Often. Thank you, Dan. So people can go to nonsense.ai slash plans if they want to look at the the details there, and of course you can actually create your account from there as well. And so the philosophy that we have, you know, which I think. We didn't do a great job at with Nonsense 1, but I think we're doing a much better job now with Nonsense 2, is that we want to make sure that our users can grow with Nonsense. So you can come in and you can actually start using the free product. You get a lot of value from that. Hopefully you make some successful trades from it as well, and you actually are able to generate some returns on your portfolio. And maybe at that point you think, hey, actually, I want to do more of this. I want to, I want to go bigger. And that's when you uh, decide to upgrade to the Pioneer plan. Uh, which is 99 bucks a month so that will give you obviously much more capabilities which you can go over and that dan touched on uh just now but if you go to nonsense.ai slash plans you can check out the details there and of course you should just try out the free product i think it's you know it's, it's a much better product now on its own than our old free product and it's a great place to get started using nonsense Okay, we've got about five minutes left. So if you have any questions, uh, please fire away, whether that's about the plans, whether it's about something you want us to look into. Um, is there anything else that you yeah. want to look into? Kind of push? I think we didn't touch on how to actually create a smart alert. I think that's something that could be quite cool to do. Oh, um, smart alerts. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool because then you can just show the flow of how to create yeah. a smart, yeah. A smart so, alert. And, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I have my pudgy trades uh, smart alert. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, things. yeah, maybe I'll try to recreate that. So we do uh, an NFT transfer, uh, and then we have addresses, or you can just you know punch in pudgy penguins. Um, actually, can I just go here, and then I can choose Telegram or Discord. There's a a quick step you have to do to connect the Nelson Telegram bot. I'm not going to do that now and leak my chat ID because then you'll be able to like spam my Telegram forever. Uh, but you basically just set it up here and it's a very simple flow to go through. There are different types of smart alerts. So we're going to be adding more types of smart alerts too. Um, and, you know, it'll be really cool when you get the chance to make use of your smart segments and so on in your smart alerts too, right? So it, it, they all become kind of more powerful, all these features, the more you use them. Um, so yeah, this is kind of where you'd go to the next step, but I'm not going to input the chat ID for now, but you can go to, uh, smart alerts here and check that out. I, I do want to mention one thing before we wrap up, uh, just to make sure that that's, uh, covered. Um, as I said before, right, this is day zero for nonsense two. And what I mean by that is we have actually lots of really exciting features that we have not shipped yet. And over the next weeks and months, we're going to be pushing out way more releases. Like I said in the very beginning, we built Nonsense 2, you know, in large part because we needed a new code base and better tech that we could ship faster with. So what you should expect as a Nonsense user going forward is a higher product velocity. That is us shipping great new features and improving the product at a higher pace than before. And so an example of this that I want to highlight, which I think will be really, really exciting when we get that rolling, is that we, we are going to integrate Numson Portfolio, which a lot of people know and love and use. Uh, it's actually our most used uh, product if you just look at traffic. We're going to be bringing Numson Portfolio into Numson 2, and then we will truly be living up to this concept of tracking everything on chain in one place. And that also allow, allows us to create even more personalized signals and feedback and insights for you, uh, which I think is going to be super exciting. And early next year, 
you can expect to see Nonsense Portfolio get implemented and integrated with Nonsense 2. Uh, in addition to improvements to all of these features that we've been showing, signals, smart segments, smart alerts, and then general performance improvements in terms of load speed and so on. But my call to action to you is, first of all, to go to app.nonsense.ai to try out Nonsense 2, and then to give us feedback in every channel you can. You can go to our Discord, for example, um, and you can give us feedback there and ask questions, etc. But it's really a much easier product to use now than Nonsen 1 was. So if you had tried Nonsen 1, but you can quite figure out how to make use of it, it's a little bit confusing where to go and so on, just go into Nonsen 2, slam command K, search for something you care about, and let that be the start of your journey. Start adding things to your watch list, maybe play around with creating a smart segment. Um, and I think from there, you'll see how powerful this product is. And personally, I'm super excited as a user of Nonsense 2. I've been using it every day since you know we started building it pretty much. And it's been fantastic to see the team be able to put together such an amazing product in quite frankly, a very short amount of time. So a massive shout out to all the builders in our team. And with that, I will say one more time, go to app.nonsen.ai and we will see each other in the metaverse. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.